Hey, what's up guys? It's Josh and we are composing live. It has been a snowy day here in Utah, but luckily I get to compose inside this nice, warm, cozy studio. So here we go. Uh, today it's a new, new track. We're gonna start a new one for today. It's uh, epic, something along the lines of our last episodes where it's epic, uh, uplifting type music. However, there'll be a hint of drama and a little bit of a struggle as well in this track, uh, inspired by the illustration that I have in the thumbnail, which looks like this right over here. And I, I pulled that off uh, on the interwebs, and you can see uh, there's just a lot of story in here that we can uh, be inspired by while we write our track for today. So uh, with that being said, um, the goal is to write something grand that tells a story of, of uh, overcoming some kind of adversity and rising above uh, to climb that top of the mountain, so to speak. Uh, we'll incorporate orchestral elements, um, hybrid elements, and maybe even choir uh, like before. Also, be sure to like this video, uh, excuse me, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it to your friends. Any help goes a long way. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Um, I really don't know where to begin, <clears throat> besides maybe starting with some spiccato strings. And um, it looks like we have uh, Doug, Mr. Doug Clyde. Hello, sir. How are you? Tired of shoveling. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, let's stay inside for sure. Staying warm, um, you know, it's nice to uh, kind of hold yourself in the studio and not worry about anything. But yeah, well, you know, when when duty calls to shuffle the snow, you have to do that, right? Okay, so let's try to um, start with something um, a little bit dramatic in the beginning. And I'm thinking uh, like a spiccato strings would be a great way to go and um, and thinking of like tempo and, and uh, uh, excuse me, the key signature. We'll see. Um, I'm just going to put the click on see how I feel right now. Oh, actually, you know what? I have my, um, my speakers on too. I'm going to mute the, those guys. You can't see that little screen I have. It looks like this. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to mute that guy. And then I can still hear on my headphones. Let's see. Okay, great. So um, tempo-wise, let's bring this up to, let's say, 126. Boom, boom, ba -da boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. That's pretty good. Let's maybe go 128. <coughs> okay, so from 128... Um, the next thing to think about is always the key. Um, so let's just make sure that I can hear my stuff. Let's also make sure that my tablet is um, connected and working. Um, sorry, uh, looks like I have some weird connection stuff happening again. So let me just make sure that this uh, kicks on and uh it's speaking to each, each other yep i can see now that my tablet is reading and i have spiccato great okay so then we have here um i've been writing in a lot of a minor and d minor <coughs> so i'm just kind of debating if we should stay that realm or maybe try a different key let's try g minor So I'm going to be sketching for a bit. Um, okay, so I'm messing around with uh, G minor, F, maybe some D minor. B flat for sure. <coughs> um,
Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. E flat. Maybe, uh. Let's see. Maybe C instead, C, C minor. <coughs> Okay, <clears throat> so you know we can start with uh, like a nice uh, four chord progression and build off of that. So let's start there, and um, I am going to make sure that this is unlocked, and let's just write in some chords. And let's put down G minor, so I can remember this. Um, then it goes to uh, B flat, and then it goes to F and C minor was the last chord. <coughs> By the way, um, these tracks I'm writing for will be eventually on an album, so kind of keep your eyes peeled out. <coughs> I don't know when it'll be uh, published, but I'm working hard to try to get at least 10 tracks uh, in this style of music going. So when the time comes and it's all ready to go, uh, you'll probably hear a lot of these tracks that you've seen on here. Only difference is they'll be polished up more and <coughs> there might be a few changes and tweaks around there, but um, at least you'll get to see the, you know, like 95% of how the track was made. All right, so let's start there. I, I kind of like this majestic uh, sounding, there you go. This, uh, like when it starts low like that, or in that range. So let's find that range real quick. There you go. So that's uh, on the G1. Anyways, <coughs> um, and we, we, we have to dress this up so it doesn't sound so generic. Um, <laughs> that it's like uh, I've heard this track before, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to try to not uh, sound like someone else in a sense and, and plagiarize. But it's kind of hard uh, when you're um, speed writing in a sense. But okay, let's try doing that rhythm. And, and I don't know, let's see. Like, maybe the reason why this sounds similar to something else is, like, that Coldplay song um, has a, a rhythm kind of like that. <coughs> um, so I'm just going to think about rhythm and how to shape that a bit. Let's see. Oh, hello. Something was recorded. <laughs> That was really weird. I don't see anything else here. Let me just double check something. Let's go here. Whoa. That was so weird. I don't see anything else here. I I didn't press play or, or I didn't play any notes and it, yet it actually played something. So it might be the chord track. That's what it was. Okay, <coughs> my bad. Let's go back to this guy, and I'm going to get settled back in. <coughs> Excuse me for my uh, clearing throat and coughing. I'm still kind of sick right now, so here we go. So let's move this over here, and let me just double check um, to see if my routing, if I have ozone on here, or some kind of limit. Oh, I have a limiter, but not ozone. Okay. The reason why is uh, there's some latency, some a lot of latency on that one. <coughs> so it's like a really behind the beat there. <laughs> All 
right, so that's one rhythm. We could um, let, let's actually uh, experiment a little bit here and do a different type of approach. I like the sound, but <coughs> I'm just feeling like someone already made a track like this. So my paranoia is leading me to try uh, different versions. Actually, I'll do a new version. <coughs> hey, Trey Trey. Hola. So I'm going to try, uh, I'll just say version 1.01 .01 out. Okay. Let's do another one. This time. Something like that, or um, let's see here. If I can play, I'll go a little slower. Okay, let's try this one just as an idea. <coughs> and let's uh, lock these guys. Okay. Um, I'm going to go a little slower on this. So, oops, wrong button. If I do that, that turns it off and it goes to 100 beats per minute. Oh, yeah. Two and. Oh, uh, you know what? I need to press this spiccato button. Let's try again. Oops. Two, three, and um, bass lines are off. Let's try. You know what? I'm gonna give myself two clicks or two measures. again. Let me actually practice that one more time. do better. Nah, it's not exactly what I'm hearing. Three <laughs> what I'm just having a brain fart. That's what it is. Let's play it one time perfectly. Okay, huh? let's try it one more time.
Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, that's probably the best one so far. Let's see if I can do another one. Okay, <clears throat> let's try it one more time. I think I got this. Two, three, and. Although there's certain notes I'm not uh, hitting, like uh, this one here. And then I'm gonna go dun, 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 yeah. Ah, I think I can do a better job. Let's try one more time. I went to F. Okay. So then the question is, do I go here or like that? I think I did that last time. Okay. So um, <clears throat> there's some weird latency stuff going on here. So what I want to do is just double check. Uh, and I'll, I'll push this over here so you can see this. But um, I'm seeing something or just kind of suspecting if I have uh, put some ozone plugins. Every time I put some ozone plugins in, it actually just like feels off and I'm not sure if it's that or if it's just uh, the computer having a bad day today let's see here so I already did this effects rack um, yeah I turned off a lot of this other stuff I do have a limiter <coughs> excuse me I wonder if um, that is doing something funky I don't really need it right now per se and I oh actually I, maybe I do because I have put these down huh interesting but is that really the source of the the, the latency I'm not sure I'm not sure so let's just try it. I'm gonna uh, bring these uh, buses back up into the mix right now it's at negative it's 6 dB so let's just go uh, like that and make that zero. Then hopefully that helps just with the feel a little bit for me in the long run. So here we go. I'm pretty happy about that take. That took a little bit of time. And what we'll do is we'll speed the tempo back up to 128. <laughs> I kind of like this going down now after hearing the second way. Okay, let's just do it like that. We'll go a uh, um, nice stepwise motion for that part. Um, let's listen to the other version again. Okay, much easier to play. <laughs> Uh, this this one is nice. Uh, I kind of like how simple it is. This one gives it um, uh, more of like a melodic feel. And it, you know, if you were to compare which one's more memorable, th this one by far would be more memorable. So something to think about. I, I think I like this one too. Um, just overall so let's stick with this idea and then <clears throat> I got the dynamics and everything all um, intact so the only thing I did was quantize the timing a bit let's go ahead now and um, let's see did I do a soft quantize or hard quantize I, I actually did a hard quantize so yeah so all of that is just baked in there um, around the grid so what I'll do now is look at the 
uh, volume and let's um, look at the meter right over here. Um, oh, I know what happened. Every time you click out of this key editor, I notice that um, it, it's the, when you record, it records over because you think it, it thinks you're in a different spot, so it's really weird. So let's hear this. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty loud. <clears throat> As you can see, um, I'm at zero dB uh, for, with my busing and everything. So let me just push this down slightly over. That's a little better. Um, we can probably push this up to like 95, call it good. This one right here, a nice dynamic, um, maybe a, a just a hair loud. So let's do that. And then, yeah, but then kind of like it before. Okay, that's better. Now that we have that, <coughs> we could probably just um, uh, do this for a few times. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly the same all, all the way through either but um, let's just do that for now and then I also like to layer strings uh, so that they sound a little bit thicker and um, more big so I've been using combinations of Pacific strings uh, Jaeger strings uh, part of the Jaeger series and then the symphonics uh, sif series of uh, Spitfire um, maybe for this one I'll stick with the Pacific and Jaeger because uh, Jaeger the good thing about them is their strings are kind of have an edge to it only problem is <coughs> I did something weird with my uh, panning so I might have, uh, like over here it's fine, but I might have done some uh, MIDI CC panning over here on some other tracks. And so that might be uh, like remembering that setting. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll also, I might have to do that <laughs> on a lot of these tracks actually. Let's do zero for now and then we can pan them later. <laughs> Let's hear that. So <clears throat> you can hear the big di differences between the two, but p putting it together, they complement each other really well. Um, Pacific's nice and warm. Actually, that's not Pacific. And then this uh, Jaeger doesn't have a lot of room sound, but it's very upfront and uh, more edgy. Um, the routing for these have some reverb. What about this one? This this is a different routing. So, <coughs> yeah, I mean, overall, pretty good. I, I'm actually just going to put a little more reverb on the Jaegers. And let's say one, negative 14. That's quite a bit more. Let's see. You hear the tail there. And, <coughs> and let's look at the... Uh, Vintage verb, uh, tail decay. Uh, I think for a song like this, we can go around, yeah, two seconds. Yeah, I'm just going to keep it there for a bit and see how that uh, affects everything overall. Because uh, this is a relatively um, medium fast track, so it doesn't have to have a huge tail on it. Let's see. Okay, great, great. <clears throat> now the other thing was uh, this bass line here has uh, notes in kind of the upper bass area. So what I'll do is let's go down and double that into um, another instance or patch here. And let's see. On these two, these are also layered, but we're going to be on the baseline. I just realized um, 
what we should be doing is probably separating these all eventually. So why don't we do this? <clears throat> now that I'm kind of thinking ahead, save us some time in the long run. It, it'll be good to separate all of this. Uh, I'm just going to delete this again. And then let's um, put them into their designated spots. So what I'm trying to say is since I have four of these and four of these, <coughs> and these are just string ensemble patches, but basically I could do this for like the actual separate parts, you know, bass, cello, or I can do it here. <coughs> and uh, sometimes for spiccatas, it's nice to just put them in the ensemble patch. So I think I'll do that. Um, and uh, let's go ahead now and put these guys on the lower high string. So A, B is, is the high strings, and C and Ds are the, the lower half. So what we'll do then is um, I'm going to copy the an instance here so that these ones that are on the, um, the lower half, I'm just going to delete. So I have uh, that, and then these guys here... I'm going to go an octave lower, and then over here, I'm going to delete the, the bass line, so which is right here. Here we go. And I'm not sure if all of these are playing. This one's not on, so... Oh, I, it is. It's just quiet. Okay. So, so that if that makes sense, I'm doing that. Um, let's listen to the bass line. Okay, make sure that they're in the right articulation. Okay, and then uh, let's put some shaping to that. Do I, I might have to do that uh, for the other one, you know, just to save time and make it consistent. I'll copy that. Okay, now it's a bit loud, so let's just put that down a bit. And, you know, I have other string libraries such as uh, Spitfire and the Metropolis Arc. <coughs> you know, it's kind of like choose your own, your poison, so to speak. Uh, I'll just stick with these ones. And let's see here. Let's do some brass. Um, the brass probably will do a combination of this and a combination of this. And what we'll do here is uh, fuse them together. Although that that may do something weird with the yeah with these guys, so let's just delete these. Okay, and then let's assign a part. Um, we'll do short beasts or qu uh, choir. I mean short choir. Okay, and then let's make sure that the compression um, levels out some of that velocity. Great. And then let's um, bring this back. I'd like to bring it back one measure, if you can, just to help avoid any weird, uh, you know, jumping of, of, of the volume, things like that with MIDI. Okay. <coughs> hey, Sam. Hey, hello, Kevin Craft. Thank you, thank you. So we are coming up with a nice little ditty uh, riff, so to speak, so that um, with the brass playing the low bass line, let's go ahead now and see if we should either do this, which doesn't really sound right. <coughs> That's one option. The other option would be, let's say, let's put a new version on there and say, rename. Uh, on this one, let's uh, maybe do some chords. Um, that's the low end. Let's try a, maybe a different voicing. I'm going to use my pedal here. A lot of coordination. So left foot is doing pedal. My 
left hand is setting the the mod. Okay. Let's see. play around with that. Let's put on a loop. Oops. Oh, hello. Oh, <laughs> it's just not my day today. There we go. Okay, here we go. I'm going to uh, mess around with the chords here. This seems to be in the, the more appropriate range in this area, so to start out with at least. And let's see. I wish I could <coughs> kind of, well, I guess I just have to practice more, but I wish I could just play it right away with the, the voicings that I want to play. <laughs> But my hands just can't do it. So let's see. So that's one. That's another. I'm trying to spread it out. That's one, another. Um, let's see here. So that might be a, a like a more of a repeat here, but I'm, I'm gonna put it in. So let's try right here. Let's check in. Oh, that was two bars. All right, so that's one voicing I like. <coughs> um, kind of spreads out. It goes out and then in, out and then in. Um, I'm curious how this would sound. Even better. <coughs> Here's some, uh, my uh, really... 
clumsy pedaling on my left foot there. Um, <coughs> let's do it with the fader. Let's do a better job on that. Okay, <coughs> and then maybe not so much on this mod, something like that. Okay, so that that's uh, the first thing. You know what? Let's put this on the downbeat. And that on a downbeat. Okay, so <coughs> let's go backwards now. How to uh, start on this one. Actually, you know, it might be good to start here. For a, uh, let, let it run for a little bit and then on the second part, we'll do that. So let's actually do this now. <coughs> and then um, let's figure that out. So the, f the first chord of the second half is that. So the first part, maybe we'll go. We'll start here. Maybe so more closed uh, type chords. Okay, so there's that. Let's, um, might want to do like two of these. I keep pushing it over as I'm <laughs> thinking, like, oh, you know, uh, it's nice to kind of hear this in repetition. So there's that, <coughs> and then. Let's draw in our CC7 as well. Cool. So yeah, let's do that twice. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. So this is kind of the the sketch. kind of quiet on that so I just fix that and then um, we can reshape a lot of this too but uh, just to so for the sake of time and so we can move a little bit more for this uh, session let's kind of see if I can draw and mitigate some of this and whoop. Um, Sam you had a question uh, did you release the Thomas Bergerson score not yet um, this, uh, so what I'm writing right now will be kind of part of this uh, production album that I'm working on. If you're familiar with production music, it's basically um, music for like reality TV shows, sometimes uh, um, other type shows. Like, uh, I mean, I guess competition shows are like reality TV, but even <coughs> like commercials, um, uh, trailers, things like that. that, that that's what I'm put going to release this album on. And... The idea is just write a bunch and, you know, put it out there and then, you know, in like uh, six months to a year, you might see uh, royalties from it where like TV shows are, are placing it. Um, yeah, so they will be released <coughs> and eventually it'll be on like a Spotify album on my artist page as well. But it won't be anytime soon. It's, that, that's pending and... It can, it can take time for the publishers to get back to you. And, and you also have to make different versions, um, like 30-second cuts and 15-second cuts, uh, uh, versions without choir, versions without percussion. So that all of that takes time. But <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm determined to, to get 
something finished by probably uh, late January this month or next month. Okay, so we have um, a, a nice little progression here. Let's come up with some other ideas now. Um, let's do... Uh, let's give this a little bit of character in another realm, a different instrument category. You know what would be fun is um, <coughs> adding some synths in here. Uh, percussion I don't generally do until later. Sometimes I, I do that first, but um, I like to just kind of really uh, develop this idea. So let's, let's go over to, this is like a piano. That's kind of nice. What's this one? Oh, you know what? This, these probably won't work. I just um, already know. <laughs> so let's uh, do that. Okay. So we have this or this as one idea. What other synths do I have? I got some bass line stuff. Okay. I really like these, these by the way. Oh, what's this one? This is kind of cool. Wait, I, I heard something else there. Oh, okay. I guess it shifts when you do the mod wheel. So l let's try um, this idea for a second. Interesting. Yeah, that's uh, it's a little funky. Okay, let's look at some other sounds. Um, let's go to, I mean we could do some pads. <coughs> Actually, you know what's faster is this, go like that. There we go. <coughs> so um, I might just turn all these guys on. And, <coughs> excuse me, do that. Uh, while we're here, let's go and open up my other computer. Okay, I have about 71% of memory left. That's great. Okay. That's kind of cool. I might use that later. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. I think this would work. <coughs> Th this, this, uh, like, the, the tone meshes really well with what's going on with everything else. Let's see here. I really like that, too. Um... This is the other one I loaded. This is a, a <coughs> this is a cool, unusual one, but I've used in like film scores in the past. But it's not, it does, it's, it's hard to tame, and I don't think it works well. But so the one that we were looking at was this one. Okay, let's look at the mod wheel. So. It's like a combination of like filtering and volume, as you can hear. <coughs> and then uh, that's it, probably. So let's think about that. Okay, 
that's one idea. Also, what happens if I do a chord? Like if I do two notes. Oh, that's cool. You can do like an octaves. Let's see. Uh, we'll see. Um, should I go lower? Okay, let's do that. Let's go on a lower octave and let's just start recording. I was messing around. Uh, I actually didn't f outline the chords all the way. Like these. Oh, hello. These uh, chords here. Can I not paste them? Oh, I think, is it because they're locked? They're locked. Okay. So I'm just going to paste these over so we know what chords we're on. But um, yeah, it was kind of cool to change it up a little bit. So I'm going to look at that now. I think what if we went higher? Oh, and then uh, F, right? So, da 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 da. -da. Okay, so something like that then, <coughs> and maintaining. Uh, the next part, I'm not sure, but whoops. if we go like this, because the, the, the brass, um, the voicing of the brass pads change here, so then what should I do? So let's do that, and that completes the uh, 20 bars or so. Okay, let's have a listen. And, you know, honestly, this could be used as is. Uh, I mean, I could see this in a some kind of uh, game show or, like, reality game show contest, um, Amazing Race or something like that, you know. It doesn't have to be so uh, complicated. Um, but <clears throat> we just need to uh, pick our instruments and then sort of develop and commit to those instruments only. Uh, let's look at a bass line. So the bass line is already being played by brass and strings. And this is like more of a traditional panning and everything, but uh, I'd like to use like a centered bass from since generally speaking. So this kind of helps warm things up. <clears throat> this one's a, a fabulous, fantastic one. But let's look at some other ones that we may uh, that that may be suitable for something like this. Um, let's look at this, 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 and this. Okay, I'm gonna turn th these guys on, and okay, so.
I mean, it's not gonna probably, it's probably gonna double up, at least in the beginning. So then uh, the reason why these are dotty, you see all the little dots there, is because I forgot to turn the group editing on off. So, and that's really important to do. The only reason why I turn these guys on and off is when um, I'm using like different uh, stuff in the folder and I want to open it up all at once. That's a quick way to do it. Uh, there are other ways to do that, but I like doing it that way. Anyways, let's look at this part. That sounds pretty good. I think um, this is a, a, a winner, but we can spend just a, a couple more minutes to audition these other ones. I just want to write these in. Yeah, that's too loud. It's pretty good. Um, we can also just bring down this right here. Uh, I already have it here, so I might as well. Let's go about there. Okay, so <clears throat> now that we have that idea, let's just quickly audition these other ones down here. I'll uh, group them together. All right, this is a quick way to do it. Just uh, grab all of these, mute the event, and then turn them on. This one doesn't seem like it turned on, so let's just make sure give it a, another chance for it to warm up there. I'm not hearing anything at all for this one, so there might be a routing issue here. Let's just double check synth base channel five. Let's look at synth base channel five, which is over here. Okay, oh. channel five. So what's wrong with you? <clears throat> it's not wanting to even play it. That's so weird. It looks like it's on. Um, I'll have to r remind myself to fix this. <coughs> um, hmm. Should I just reload it in? Let's see here. Diva. Uh-oh. Oh, there you go. Diva. Let's just reload it in and see if it works this time. It looks like everything should be working, so... Not sure why. This is, f it's called HS um, Contra Base. But a lot of these things are in funky folders. So let's just see if I can find it here. Okay, it's right here. No. Okay, so did I route something wrong here? That's so strange. Yeah, everything seems to, or should to work at least. What about this one? See, this one works, this one works, this one works. But this one doesn't want to work. That is so strange. Let's see, um, well, that's okay. What I'll do is I'm gonna double this track and let's just relabel this, this, delete it. And let's push this to five. And did that, did that do anything? Wow. The output is up. Oh, it must be like a bad patch or something. That's so weird. Okay, well, um, that's okay. Uh, let's just uh, d uh, disable this channel and move on with life. Life is too short. Let's go to this one instead. Alright, now 
That's an interesting. Okay, let's listen to it with a, a different setting. So meaning. So it sounds like the mod wheel just makes it more uh, vibrato. So let's just bring up the volume there. Interesting. This one blends in really well. It's like you can't even hear it. Um, if you you have to almost focus on it to hear it. Kind of cool. <clears throat> I, I knew this one would come in handy one day. <laughs> Red square. Yeah, it's like a pulse. It's a pulse wave. Um, this one here. This one also sounds great, by the way. <clears throat> if we're to um, layer them, it could be uh, a, a bit much, but it kind of gives it a full body experience. volume down on that just slightly. Okay. Let's do that. Let's combine those two together. <clears throat> um, this one I actually used in a different live stream and I, I really liked it. So <clears throat> we could maybe use this later on and think uh, more of like an arpeggio effect. like. like that yeah I don't know <clears throat> so maybe I'll, I'll keep that one and then um, this 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 two uh, I I've used in the past I just can't remember uh, let's see I thought this had a little bit more zing to it so um, it's kind of throwing me off why it sounds different Anyways, uh, I'm just going to disable that one um, or just do that. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Let's move on. So let's uh, put this on the last part of this section. Okay. Let's balance the volume. So uh, it, it gets a little repetitive around this part. <clears throat> so then we might need to add a different kind of layer. Um, let's let's actually focus on the strings here for a sec. <clears throat> let's look on um, one of these events. Okay, so. So, um, let's move this up. Hmm. Yeah, let's move it up here.
just wonder if, if it'll sound weird too. Let's listen to it as is. Probably needs to go higher actually. <clears throat> so let's move these guys like that. That's good. So then let's just bring up the velocity on these two notes. And then here we have That. So you land on the C. Hmm. Um, I might have to go to a D like that. All right, so <coughs> what if we do that also here? Hmm, let me hear in context, just the strings. First off, if you look at, um, let's glue these two together first off. Actually, let's do on both of these. If you look at the waves or the faders here, they look uh, the same. <coughs> but for some reason, the power is lost on this. So what I'm gonna do is just bring up the velocities on this. Oh yeah, but you know what? I might have to copy that into the other one because I actually uh, used a mouse instead. So yeah, looks like this did not change. There you go. <coughs> okay, so I'm just thinking out loud. I'm doing this one. I'm not really, I'm not digging it going higher, like, or, or kind of staying in this higher area permanently. So it just seems unnatural. So what if I w go back to this first, first idea, which is here. Is that right? So maybe hit that low F, but let's work our way up. Okay, that, that sounds a little better. I don't know. Personal taste. Yeah. Okay, 
it and then here <clears throat> what if we split this bring the velocities of these two down slightly. Okay, <clears throat> all right, so uh, that first step is good. Let's go and duplicate that here. All right, cool. Um, let's now work on a second section here, which will be the um, upper half, and then we'll we'll copy that and put it into the Jaeger string ensemble A down there. And we'll have ourselves a, a nice full string uh, section, so to speak, all spiccato. So then, <coughs> here we have. Spiccato. Okay. And if the first notes were. Right there, that's your your note in like the mid strings. So the high would be like something around there. I'm gonna slow it down and play around with that. Go back uh, with well, two bars. I can do this. So the second, this uh, second chord, I'm not sure what to do there. Mm. Maybe something like that. I like how it starts. I like how that starts on the F chord. <laughs> it's just uh, the one in between, so. Um oh. Maybe, yeah, okay. Let's try that. And this is just one idea, but um, let's see if I can execute that first. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's a little funky. I think I do better. Uh, give myself one bar it's like uh, just a little too early because I have to press this button 
Let's um, move this back so you can see the CC data there. And let's put this all one measure before. Okay, like that. <coughs> and that was a lot better. So then this first note was probably cut off because it was um, recorded at the tempo there or at the event there. So let's push this forward. And am I missing a note? It looks like I'm missing a few. <laughs> How did that happen? One e and uh da 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 so this is should be on the and right here. Da 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 something Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, and wow, look at the funkiness here. Let's go highlight all those. Okay, I think we can quantize these guys. Okay, and then let's put it back to full speed. Great, and then let's put that on the, <coughs> excuse me, the other track here. Okay, let's uh, dial the volume down slightly. Too much. So this is where it'd be interesting to either split it between the two patches and go one octave higher on the next one, uh, or just draw it in and, and put it both in there. Probably sonically, it would be better to do it like this on both. I don't know, I'm gonna try this approach and just bring that down slightly. Okay, <coughs> let's listen to it from the top again one more time. Oh, hello. Did not want to do that. Um, let's press save real quick. And also, before I press play, let's look at the infliction. I think the infliction here might be uh, a tad loud. Sounds cool, but I don't know how l low I should go. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I see, and partly it's because these filters are going higher and higher for the diva cutoffs here, so. Like that. And then if that's the case, maybe this will sound better down here too. Um, let's delete these guys though. Okay, and let's try it from the top.
So <clears throat> let's um, try this now. I, I mentioned maybe one of these goes up and the other one stays down. I'm kind of curious if we did that and hear the, the sonic differences between the two. Yeah, see one and the other. <coughs> That to me sounds better, but you, you're sacrificing certain things about it. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, one sounds better than the other. So, like for instance, if I swap these around and oops, did this instead. So now the Pacifics are the one that's playing the higher octave, as you can see here. It switches from this octave to this octave. <laughs> They s both sound good. Let's uh, undo that. I kind of like this one better. Uh, again, this is all subjective. Um, <clears throat> any any time I I'm like, oh, this sounds better. You might think the whole opposite. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and that's okay. I, I might uh, look back on this video and watch it again. Like, what was I thinking? But let's just let's uh, focus on that, and then <clears throat> one thing I like to do is start thinking and panning. So th this to me sounds a bit like uh, violin one, violin two, and if if I were to think this is violin one, I might want to pan this whole entire thing to the left, off to uh, off this much, um, uh, just as. Uh, a way to differentiate these two. So, so now I'm I'm treating this as violin one and uh, Pacific as the violin two. If that makes sense, and it splits off. And if you can hear that with good headphones or speakers, <coughs> you'll see that um, there's a bit more separation with the left. I think that sounds better. But this poses is kind of a problem because <coughs> if you do it too much, then it, everything else kind of sounds out of balance. So uh, over here, I'm just going to go back up just a tad. And then <coughs> over here, let's look at the other ones. For instance, the Jaegers, which is, this is kind of like a viola part. Maybe this viola part <coughs> will be slightly pan over to the right more, not too much, like right there. And then, you know, this is like cello. <coughs> like this one can go even more. This is panned already to the right. It's just kind of quiet. So I'm going to bring this back up slightly. Yeah. Hey, Sam, uh, sorry I, I ignored your comment there. One thing I saw Thomas Bergerson do was if you EQ everything and have strong enough harmonies, you can have moving bits across the whole scale and not be muddy. That's a good point. <coughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think EQ is... Uh, is one thing but um i think you know my opinion is like 90 percent of it is just the harmonies and the arrangement of of the way you're composing your stuff as opposed to eq um eq and then conjunction with automation and uh even you know the midi cc data over here like the cc11 if you can get that right and uh, really bring out the sonorities and the and the chords for voicings i, I think I think you got it, but yeah, a, a lot of it w is just the arrangement of things. Um, I totally agree. So let's go over to this uh, section here now. So there is this part that sounds kind of empty. So maybe we put a little embellishment, <coughs> maybe in horn. Um, let's look at some other fun ideas. 
we can try like a solo cello or solo violin or viola, something like that. That would be interesting. <clears throat> Let's press play and see what we can do. If this is going here, maybe, yeah, maybe a, the whole time from 5 to about 12 or the end of 12. So from there to there, we can put something in. Something like that. Yeah, I, I, I get you, Sam. Um, EQ wasn't the point. So let's see here. I have to uh, think th think about what that violin parts do now. Ooh. Let's see here. There's some bad tuning uh in this patch. <laughs> You can you can kind of hear uh, like a flat note. Um, <coughs> let's see. So how to incorporate that into the beginning somehow? Start on the B flat. Yeah, <clears throat> the idea is like go descending. Where do you even start on the <laughs> on the G. And so G there, let's try again. Okay. So then let's look at that.
think it. Let's look at the phrasing one more time. <clears throat> ba, ba, na, na, na. Maybe a, a little pause on the on the halfway point. The cello hit you hard, huh, Sam? Yeah, uh, it's funny how things like that work out. Um, cello just actually blends well with so many things. So, <clears throat> um, I think I'll, I'll make this a half note instead. Sorry. That was a little early. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Pretty good. Um, so that volume of the cello seems right. I think if we were to think anything else here, um, an accessory like a uh, harp or even some more arpeggio kind of ideas uh, in, in synths, um, piano, I'm, I'm trying to think out loud here. Ones that we haven't used is woodwinds. You don't always have to use woodwinds um, in tracks like these actually. But uh, if we were to, how to make uh, enhance the sound is is the challenge. So let, let's see if there's something we can do here. And these are just uh, woodwind ensemble patches. Um, I'm just thinking out loud. <coughs> the woodwind ensemble patches are nice for certain things. Let me look at some soloistic ideas too. I haven't actually used these uh, Spitfire woodwinds yet. That'd be g give me an opportunity to try some. Although I, I do like some of these other ones I have too. Okay, let's look at clarinet. Uh, maybe English horn and oboe. Let's look at these three. Um, Flute too, why not? So one's a flute solo and the other is flutes. Um, let's do that. And let's turn these guys on. <coughs> sorry, sorry, Doug. Uh, it's, it's all the uh, years of training I've gotten over the, uh, the being uh, an assistant and <laughs> other things where a lot of times we don't use woodwinds for our stuff. And that, that's a personal preference, I know. Let's see here. Let's look at... this and see what's happening <coughs> it's like not triggering so i am going to fix that i might have to just do it manually I'll, I'll have to come back to it and see why it's not um turning on yeah i think i know why anyways let's just turn these guys on manually you're gonna see uh, all my stuff on the piano ensemble side now Okay, so
Let's look at this one. Oh, I couldn't really hear that. Okay, so the, the cello's going. Uh, and then. <clears throat> so we can maybe play that an octave higher, or we can <coughs> go a little more fancier and um, harmonize it. What's the cello playing? Let's look at both lines. Okay, um. <clears throat> so maybe here. Oops, that's cello. Let's uh. Make sure that they don't, don't overlap. And then it doubles there. So let's go like this. I was thinking English horn for a second, but then I'm like, <coughs> maybe this blends better. Because as you know, clarinet is the best instrument ever. I'll wait for uh, Doug to say something about that. Let's see here. <laughs> yeah. Sure is a, a damn good instrument. Um, so I think the this is working out pretty well. And then I think uh, I might have cut off that slightly too short. But <coughs> let's see what what we could do on the upper parts. So now that I have some shape to this, like I put some curves on there and the notes. Let's look at the oboe, <coughs> and maybe on oboe we can go like either an octave higher and play what the cello plays um, as one idea. So an uh, easier way to do this, I'm going to jump a lot back and forth. <coughs> so the oboe's here. Um, okay. And then let me get rid of that. It's gonna match what this the cello's playing. Okay. 
This one kind of rushes, huh? Uh, let's push this cello back slightly. Okay, I might have to change some of these notes as time goes on. Um, let's actually look at now the uh, cello, uh, yeah, cello, clarinet, and oboe together. Weird. The, the um, cello kind of lingers on the last note there, so I'm going to just uh, match it with the woodwind, even though it's not visually. Seems like it, it, it works better that way. <coughs> then um, also got flute. It's kind of quiet. Let's bring up that. Well, that's a low range. Let's go higher. So the, uh, the flutes are an octave of oboe. I'm wondering if we could just <coughs> squeeze a little more harmony into this. So let's also turn this one on, which is uh, the flute solo KS. Uh, KS stands for key switch. So anytime I have a key switch, I know that I have to uh, use my tablet over here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I can see which uh, articulations I have programmed in. So <coughs> what I'll do is maybe on the flute solo. Let's I'll, I'll bring it up by the way. It's kind of quiet. Okay, and then maybe on on this flutes we can go down from there. So I'll, I'll just look at these two. I'm gonna color this a different color, and <coughs> let's look at the flute here okay so the, the clarinet was doing something uh, different right so let's look at clarinet too so we kind of see the range we're working with <coughs> so somewhere in between these and the, uh, actually the oboe is an octave lower so we can't go to a G because that's basically an octave so Let's uh, do something different. <coughs> let's go do a D on this part. And then let's go to B flat. Right, because this is F. All right, let's go here to, uh, so let's listen. So <coughs> this can go to E flat or uh, up to a G. Okay, and now let's try this. Um, so if we were to double the clarinet, it would do this. And let's go uh, stay on the E flat there. Oh, you know what? <coughs> These are legatos. I need to change this to a sustain. So they play. Okay, that clarinet's really loud, huh? Let's bring that clarinet. Sorry, Doug, I know <laughs> it's the best instrument in the world, but we gotta take that just slightly down, I think. Oh yeah, we'll fix this part, so. Okay, 
So <clears throat> let's go to the second half. Second half, we're going to go look at the notes here again. So this is a G minor chord. So I'm going to go here and then double that to the clarinet. Um, let's over delete overlap. Okay. Same thing here. That's good. Delete overlap. And then uh, F. Oh, I see. I have to go up. <coughs> and then this is an A. And this is a E flat C. Okay. So then now we have some uh, with the oboe is pretty full. It's all orchestrated with the chords. Um, not v veering off much from the triads here, but um, it sounds good. So let's just keep it simple when we can. sounds really good I think um, yeah yeah uh, you know I think adding woodwind just m makes everything much richer and uh, yeah it, it, it doesn't it makes things less generic sounding if anything <laughs> yeah so why do all composers have ball mouse uh, Sam asked that this thing right here um, this is a Kensington ball mouse. I think when you s start working a lot, you just start getting weird hand issues. Uh, <clears throat> my mom had carpal tunnel syndrome, and um, you know it was really painful for her. And then when I started working, I, I would start kind of getting little, you know, tidbits of pain or carpal tunnel. And then I, I was like, I gotta avoid this from happening. I don't want to go through that so <clears throat> this is one way to do it I also uh, recommend a vertical mouse just to show you guys Th this is a vertical mouse well, if you can see on the camera there and uh, it's much taller than a regular mouse but <clears throat> I kind of switch off every now and then for that and um, yeah albedo music I always play too loud <laughs> Well, uh, you know, it you kind of have to, right? Because then uh, the, the orchestra will drown you out if they don't. All right, so let's do this. Let's go to the next part. I think we're okay with this. Um, I think what we'll do on the next part is like start adding maybe some trills or other things, any sparkly woodwind ideas on this second half so stay tuned for that let's uh, have a listen <laughs> okay <clears throat> excuse me so one idea would be if we go to the runs combo of this is this the right one this might have it let's see Not playing anything. Okay, so let me look at <laughs> my other. Oh, yeah, so this one. But is this on? There we go. Okay, so this is kind of proof of, proof of concept again. So actually the next half goes here. Let's put a marker there. Okay. Actually, th <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but that sounded cool. <laughs> uh, might, might circle back on that run. But uh, I was thinking some ideas of this instead. <coughs> Um, 
Um, I think this one is a major or like a minor trill right now, so I'm I'm not sure. I have to look at my routing again for the tenth time today. <laughs> Let's look at the woodwinds, which I believe are here. Okay. I I, I forget how this um, patch works. This is Cine samples right here, and then um, I have them in a funky way where the expression map um, hits different channels. So the one I'm playing was this, this one. And if I click on this, does it show? Oh, okay, so there's no key switch, but there are um, two octaves. Uh, I think the second octave is a minor trill. And then the lower octave is a major trill. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. So, <coughs> just an idea there. I'll keep that in mind. Depending on which part of scale I'm at, I have to do that. So, now it's not playing. Did I turn it off? Hello. Okay, that was weird. Now it's working again. Oh, okay. So, anyways, I think I know what. <coughs> okay, so that's one idea. Let me let me uh draw this out. sound right let's see here let's find the right chord so dun, dun. I might have to have two of these if if I were to do it in chords hmm I only have enough for one though <coughs> let me uh, pull out a second one just in case let's have it loaded in manually so I'll have one uh, ready to go on the Vienna, but maybe on my s other template, or if I update my template, I'll add a second one for these trills. Um, we'll let that load for a second. I just had a thought, and when I, when I close this out, now it's like stuck. And this happens sometimes. Um, I'm going to go to the parts here too. I just wanted to check if the um, Spitfire stuff over here has trills, which I'm sure they do. Okay, <coughs> they do. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, am I thinking too much here and just adding, is adding this overkill? This is kind of more of a sketch thing. I, um, well, I'm, I'm already here, so might as well. Let's go ahead and... Um, yeah, why not just do this entire thing? So this is the combos I was talking about. And then uh, let's just put an expression map on here. Call this the runs combo. Or is it runs only? Yeah, this one. Okay. And then I'll call this B. Okay, anyways, the reason why I want to sketch this out <coughs> and make it sound good, <laughs> and then we might have to just take everything and put it back where it was, or we can keep it as is. I don't know. So this is, we have both options. We'll try a first option here so okay. okay anyways this isn't 
like 100% right, but it gets us into the right areas. And then this should probably just be a major trill. And then this is a minor trill. And then back to where we were. Okay. And then, you know, maybe with this gap we can go like a little run. <coughs> that's that's one idea. So go like this. All right. So then let's take that and put it down here. Let's just make sure that this is working. So uni trill tremolo, uni tremolo. I have my expression map in there. And it's acting weird. <coughs> Let's see here. Am I not on the right one? It should be that one. Huh. All right. Let's look at that. So, oh, this might be an older one. That's probably why. Okay. So, shoot. So 14, I'm just going to double check this. So where you get bogged down with all the all the junk. So this um, uni tremolo goes to 15. Uh, yeah. <coughs> so it's doing some weird. Uh, it, it, it's not going to the right places. Because I updated this, but I didn't update this uh, multi-patch. <coughs> so this should be 15. Um, excuse me. I'm just going to change this one. And then uh, this is probably 16. Which means somewhere around here, they got, they got all shifted with the MIDI channels. Like, yeah, I mean, oh, well, go figure. Okay, now it's working. Okay, so let's go to B flat. Okay, so how does that sound together? Okay. And this isn't perfect because it doesn't have all the right range of notes. It just has like one octave for each uh, major minor. So then what am I trying to do here? Let's go to A. Let's put the volume down on this one. <coughs> and then um, let's go to C. And I think that's right. C here. sounds a little funky on that part okay now I don't really hear anything oh that's why I muted on accident okay and now let's bring this one back up What if we go, um, no, I don't want the tap tempo there. What if we go G minor, or I mean, just on the lower part. So this one has to go here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, interesting. Huh. 
Huh. This note is lower. <laughs> That's so weird. It doesn't do that though here, huh? <coughs> so anyways, we'll, we'll fix that in the, in the instruments. Okay, so anyways, let's just finish this off and move on. So here we have C. And let's move this. Oh, uh, I see what happened there. Okay. Anyways, <coughs> I think I, we can do a better job uh, over here, but that's the idea. The, uh, let, let's just uh, add one more thing, which would be the run. So if we were to do this and then change it to like a little, let's see. We just have to make sure we're in the key of either B flat or G minor here. So I think uh, let's draw this in as well. Okay. And hmm. Can I? Okay. Yeah. I don't want to assign anything there. And then what was it? Here's an idea. Okay. This could work. It takes some programming though. And this was um, what I'm afraid of is uh, the this volume needs to be programmed with it because the way I have the expression map it's funky, but this should work now. Okay, so that's one. And let's look at the other. So this is a longer one. <coughs> okay, so maybe we can go the other octave, or sorry, the other direction right here. And going higher um. <coughs> okay <laughs> something like that okay so then I could probably just del delete all of this I'll just delete it I think I'll remember that so the other approach is uh is just drawing all the tr trills. I don't want to say tremolos, but they're actually trills over here. Um, let's do that now so that we can kind of hear how these two jive together and then uh, we can start cruising. So first off, this is a G minor chord. Uh, I'm going to start with the flutes. We'll go top to bottom this time. Let's go, okay, and then, something like that, right? <coughs> I think we can just do one, and then on the other flutes patch, we can do another. So let's go to the other, they're all highlighted, so now I'm on the flutes patch, which is the like flutes two basically. There you go. Flutes and let's hear how this sounds. Okay. Let's quickly go down to the next one, which is oboe. And 
And these are, they should be uh, major trills if it's G, okay. Then clarinet. Um, <clears throat> this again, should we do this one on a D? Okay. You know what? I thought this was a B flat. My bad. I meant to do that. All right. So <clears throat> technically, that should work. But I might just follow what the tr uh, the clarinet's doing. Do that. Okay. Let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> interesting let's take a, a step back and listen to the whole thing Yeah, I, I think there could be a, a little bit of a break here. If it goes, da, 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 yep. um, and then we could give a gap and then do it again somewhere on the second half. Uh, I think that'll work. Uh, let's just make that run slightly quieter, though. So where did that go? So uh, no, it was purple. I remember it was purple. Yeah, this one. So... Let's uh, take that down a notch. Okay. <clears throat> cool. And then I, I wonder if you can control that further with the uh, CC11. I kind of want to dip it down on the bottom there, on the last half. Okay. It's, it has a natural dynamic, but I also want to bring up the descending line there. I think that works. Let's do this. Exaggerate even more. And just bring this up slightly. Okay. <coughs> so th this is a kind of cool idea that we could sort of uh, j uh, feed it across the entire thing, but I just want to make sure we're also on the right key. Um, I might have deleted it, huh? So let's draw that in back, and we're not going to assign anything on here. And let's put this on G. Is it G or G minor? Um, oh, is it B? Fl uh, I put it on the B flat chord, huh? So let's put on B flat. Okay, that's what it was. <clears throat> so then, if we were to do it again on the second half here, then. Maybe on the C chord. So then this would uh, essentially change to C minor. And then put it maybe here. I don't know. This might change rhythmically. So like maybe I'll do a sh shorter one. Yeah, I'll have to hear it again. I had an I I, I kind of heard that in my head, but now I have to rehear it. <laughs> then, yeah. So starting here, shorter, <coughs> and then here, go shorter. But I think it's this one. Yeah. 
I don't know if this is tempo sync, but it seems okay. I mean, like, I, I'm just putting it on the grid, and it's nice to not have to wrestle with that. Okay, so I think we have everything we need, so let's put the, let's draw this other part. <coughs> it's kind of loud, actually. Let's, uh, might not have to do too much on there, actually. That, that's the idea, All right? So then you do that uh, twice. That should work. D, um, so then it repeats here, huh? So let's just put this one over here. Oh, copy that. And let's put this one on G like that. All right. So we're going to have to chop this off. And when we glue this one in, just want to make sure that doesn't mess with all our curves or this down here, which I need to paste the B flat uh, trigger back in. Uh, all this programming. Okay, so that should be good at least to the end of the phrase. And then let's just uh, go with our trill idea again one more time. So we have all the clarinets, woodwinds, and flutes, oboes. Is it English horn? Oh, it's oboe, actually. <coughs> oh, hey, uh, by the way, thanks for everyone that is uh, watching this stream. I do appreciate you guys. And... Um, uh, the comments that you're making, I, I may miss you from time to time, like uh, Cheyenne. Um, I know you just uh, made a compliment. I, I appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot. Um, with everyone else, you know, uh, how often do you have to change keys is what Sam asked. I think uh, that's uh, when you say change keys for like the Hollywood ones. Um, yeah, <laughs> you, you just as much as you need to, I guess. It's It's a lot of work, yeah. Okay, so <coughs> with that being said, um, let's go to this part. Looks like uh, Kevin had to go, but yeah, appreciate you coming. Let's look at the trills. Okay, so what I was saying before is we have this trill idea. And then, um, if that's all okay, let, let's go to the second half, which was this F. Um, I'm not going to start the F... At the start of the measure, I might do something similar <coughs> with the uh, Hollywood wooden run. Let's see. Well, let's make sure this is in the right spot. Okay, this is going to also have some tricky programming. So... Okay, so I, I can't really hear that. <coughs> I'm wondering if I can change this back to E flat. <coughs> okay, so the trick is all the all of those uh, nice woodwinds uh, stand out, but this is so low. Maybe we can go higher. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so we might not need to do the F1. <coughs> and I'm thinking maybe even for this part, it doesn't have to start at the beginning. Huh, interesting. I actually hear some uh, trills down here, which means I, I might have, <coughs> excuse me, I might have uh, not deleted this, yeah, 
So this stuff here. Okay. So the, the hard part is just getting the right register or voicing. I think <coughs> we can make this work. Um, it does have start the the start of this measure, I think, and then. Uh, What if we went <coughs> lower like this? And like this. Okay. And then just shape it so that it's not so loud. Oh, interesting. So both of these do something different. Okay. Let's look at each one. So starting with this one. Okay, let's look at this one. We're in the key of G minor, right? Well, this one's kind of loud. <coughs> so, why is this so loud? Oh, I see. It's not loud when I play it, but... Okay, so I guess that works. So then, this one. Let's listen to it solo. Okay, let's put a little breather on that. Okay. Let's bring up maybe this one. Okay. Mm, this one's a bit too quiet. No, this, one <coughs> this one too, probably. Okay, uh, that's uh, that's actually a good volume now. <coughs> um, Sam, uh, to clarify, you said, no, just you and your scores. How often do you change keys? Oh, I see, I see. So um, it depends. <coughs> so for production music, you actually don't want to uh, do it just as a general rule of thumb. When I say production music, I mean like library music where you put it on you know Warner Chapel websites or... Uh, similar extreme music is another big production company um, generally you don't do that but um, I, I will in like film scores if it if there's a need for it um, 
Yeah, but y- y- there are times where you can do ch- key changes in production music too. It's just it's risky because then <coughs> you know editors that will put it into like a show might not like it and then decide ultimately to go to a different uh, track altogether. So it, it's one of those things that you're like, ah, you, you can get trapped in it. But if you can do it tastefully, you know, I, I think that could also um, put you, um, um, ha- differentiate your track from other tracks. All right. <coughs> Man, my um, throat just keeps uh, getting tickling here. So I, I hope to stop coughing and... <laughs> getting better soon but um you you guys will have to uh, deal with my cost for a bit more okay so let's uh play this from the top Okay, so I think we we can do this uh, safely, just copy and paste this over. Okay, so maybe on the second time we we, uh, add a F trill. Let's see. I mean, with the drums and everything, it's not going to really, you're not going to uh, pay too much attention to this, actually. But <coughs> I'm just going to experiment with this. Because it goes there, and then... Okay, so let's make sure this is right. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's go down. Hmm. Uh, would this work for the most part? These are all in major trills. I can overlap them. Nice to overlap it just a little more. Okay, so maybe on two. No, not really. It's it's like really on three, but <coughs> we can sort of rush uh, into the beat. Okay, <coughs> cool, cool, cool. So um, think of this as a crescendo section. From 13 to 20, we're going to just um, keep building and building. So, all right, <coughs> let's add one more element, which will be maybe horns. Let's see here. Let's do... I have this uh, ensemble patch, sounds great. Um, I also have these parts, which probably are a better approach in the long run. So let's actually start with the part. Cool. You know, <coughs> I'm having second thoughts with this. We probably need to bring this volume up slightly more since the woodwinds are uh, accompanying it, but it's, uh, it's like drowning out the uh, cello. Let, let's listen to that. Really.
horns sound great. Let's, let's uh, do something like that. Let's see here. I'm thinking about the last chord there. Legato was off on that, or hmm, maybe I should try a different. So this was on just longs, huh? Okay, yeah. So let's do a different one. <coughs> let's try the other articulation here. I like that one better. Okay, I have to decide what to do here. <coughs> okay. Okay, <coughs> so that sounds good. Um, let's make sure the timing's good. to our, our rushing. Okay. All right, cool. <coughs> now Actually, you know, let's do it this way. And then, yeah, shorten that one. So that goes to the G. This A goes to the G. Or go F. Um, now, <coughs> I'm wondering if, what if we go 
uh, one octave lower. starting to shape so there's some certain notes that still kind of rush to me it's hard to tell until you hear a few times thinking at this point <clears throat> we might be ready to do some drums so let's go and see what drums we can add here <clears throat> sorry that's not drums <laughs> let's look at this part We can do like you know, good old snare, <clears throat> or we can do more like a trailer tom feel. Uh, what other drums have I used? This one would be good. Let's see here. Is it not on? There you go. Okay, so something like this would, would be go a long way. And this is a preset from the Action Strikes library. <coughs> something like that would be nice and driving. Um, Okay, well, let's try maybe the F note. an idea um, like having the drums kind of sparse and then have it really kick in here makes sense to me although <clears throat> I can't really hear the the rattle stuff with everything else that's happening I guess you can and well I guess it's more of the mid middle <clears throat> I'm actually curious let's, let's change this to so it's like two octaves. This one. <coughs> and then, yeah, let's just bring up this entire thing. Okay, so there's one. Then some, there's something about this library. I have to look at it. Um, there are triggers on it 
from what I remember. So let's look at that. And I think the trigger are down here. Okay. So, <clears throat> like for instance, the D sharp would be a good one for like the beginning. Or even, even, even for here actually. So let's uh, draw that in. So it's a D sharp, right? D sharp one. Okay. So that, uh, and it's kind of loud, but let's see here. Bring that down. Um, Let's try this one. <clears throat> okay, so this would work really well, but the the last note should also accent right here. I think. Bum 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 right here. Is that right? There you go. Now, maybe this last note doesn't have to sound so bombastic. It doesn't really do anything. <clears throat> I think it's actually more to do with the uh, mod wheel. Yeah. It's that first note. But if I go higher, let's we'll see what happens. Okay, cool. So we could probably do that instead. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And then let's look at the pitch bend. I think the pitch bend will make that louder. Oopsie. Somewhere in there. I think we got it. <clears throat> so that that's that's good for that part. I don't know what to do here. I, I just put some stuff down and played, but let's look at that. <clears throat> so the key though is changing this switch to a simpler one like this one, which was on this side you can see how C one is just whole notes and then C sharp are half notes. So you, you could do something like that. And uh <laughs> not sure what happened there. Am I doing something wrong? Or is this just because it's uh short? Yeah. It's okay. So th this could work for maybe the whole entire thing, but we should probably also get rid of this. Uh Sean, you had a question there. Uh did you in Vienna, one instance per library. <laughs> I did. <laughs> it's crazy, huh? It works actually. <clears throat> I have a hundred instances of uh, Vienna on that side of things over here. Um, you can see this all labeled 90 93, and then it, it goes past uh, 100 to 109, and it works. It works really well. <clears throat> it's way better than going one instance and then doing like you know 100 or 200. Uh, uh, instruments uh, the reason being um what will i mean it, one for the organization factor so like if you add more libraries in the future much easier to organize this way and second is um 
when you do the render in place, if you ever need to, it'll uh, intact uh, all the inserts and sends when you do it. And it's just, it's more convenient. <clears throat> so yeah, you can do it that way. You can go over a hundred and it's, it's pretty seamless. So this is a 38. That's kind of cool. <clears throat> um, let's try this uh, simpler one. Okay, and then let's look at the pitch bin. Uh, it, it might be... I'm not sure if it's at zero or if it's like stuck at this, but it could be a little bit quieter. Let's put it at zero. So now, now that things are getting a little louder and stuff, what I would do is uh, there was um, something I did earlier where I assigned this one. This patch is like violin one, and this is violin two. <clears throat> I might have to do this, and uh, it's kind of confusing, so I'm just wondering if I should change that. But anyways, um, the idea is it needs to be brought up here, either with uh, another layer like this is what I'm thinking. And it automatically sounds better. So maybe I'll just do one. It's kind of funky with the panning that I have here. This, this is like more uh, center left and, and this one is far left. Okay. <clears throat> well, anyways, it's coming along. The the last thing we could do is just add just a more rattly sound on top. Let's see. I'm not sure if this one has it, but let's see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good luck, Cheyenne. It's a lot of work. Once you get it going, <coughs> there are um, ways to just make it smoother. Yeah, um, hit me up sometime if you want to, uh, uh, if you have any questions. I mean, man, I, I wrapped my head around this thing for years. This took me like five years to really perfect, and it, um, I'm able to write a lot of film scores seamlessly now. It, it's just so much better. Okay, let's see here. Blockbuster. Looking for that rattly. Whoopsie. So this one actually has a good one. <clears throat> it's the same patch though, that I'm kind of worried. Okay. So <clears throat> if we're gonna do that one, we might be able to just layer this. Uh, let's copy this one over here and find that note. Let's just see if it works. Works pretty okay. <coughs> And then, so this 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 track reminds me of something you hear like on Survivor, <laughs> while they're going over the course or like the the end credits or something. Anyways, let's add just a little more. This, this is kind of becoming a tribal sound, um, so let's go that way a little more. Uh, 
find a different sound and bring this down in volume. I'm probably too high. Let's see here. Let's go lower on octave. Hmm. Let's try this one. Okay, so <clears throat> I think um, we are good to go here. Anything else? Um, yeah, there, there's all sorts of fun things. Let's just add a whoosh uh, between this part and the, the busy part. So let's add um, like a cymbal swell. Um, <clears throat> something simple like that. And put this in here. Okay, not a bad volume. Let's just bring it up a bit. Okay, and I think we're good. So <clears throat> that is all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, be sure to like and subscribe on these videos if you are enjoying them. Um, support um, is done in many different ways. If you look in the description, there's uh, ways where you can uh, go to my um, Spotify page. Uh, be sure to follow that. Um, go to any of those links that have um, some resources, like uh, there's a book that I wrote. It's, it's not really a book. It's more of an e-guide, um, 10 ways that you can become a better composer. Uh, you can sign up for that, and then uh, that will automatically uh, sign you up for a newsletter that uh, makes announcements whenever I do these streams or anything uh, that comes up that might be beneficial to you so let's go ahead now and press play um, this is the part one of this new epic uh, uh, inspirational or overcoming rising rising and above track let's press play Okay, that's it, guys. Well, thanks for watching again, and um, be sure to stay uh, in tune for the next stream, which will probably be next week. So uh, uh, until then, take care. I'll see you later.